Hello and welcome to the Embedded C Programming Design Patterns course. This course is available here on YouTube. And also, if you don't want to wait until the next module comes out, you can get this course as a book, as book plus videos, Udemy course, and also all of the book and video content, as well as live sessions with me on Wednesdays, which is available at SwedishEmbedded.com. So the book is available on Kindle. You can download it uh, from Amazon. The Udemy course contains the book materials as uh, resources, as PDFs here. And on the website, we have the course available as a standalone course uh, directly on the website. You just click join here, enter your details, register as a student, and then you will have access to all the course materials and also the weekly Q&A, which is uh, in five days, eight hours at the time when I'm recording this. All right, so let's get on with the next module of this course. Hello and welcome to another module of the Design Patterns Training. My name is Martin Schroeder at SwedishEmbedded.com. If you have any questions regarding this training, you can always join our Discord channel, which uh, you'll find a link to this channel at SwedishEmbedded.com. Or you can email me directly at martin.schroeder at SwedishEmbedded.com. In this particular module, we're going to look at the pattern of returning status from functions in C. And uh, the C programming language uh, doesn't have features such as exceptions, so there is no way of um, uh, directly emitting an exception from some deep place in the call stack and then handling it somewhere higher up in the call stack. So we always have to return a status. But if we don't do this correctly, we will not uh, have clean code with clear expectations. So we need to improve uh, the cleanliness of, of our code. And we do that by standardizing the way that we, that we return status from functions. So let's go ahead and look at some of the features of this pattern. The return value pattern is a standardized way of returning status that I use personally. And uh, it's basically based on the idea that we always return an integer status from a function that is a non-trivial function that needs to return some kind of status. And uh, zero always means that there was no error. A negative value means that there was an error and the value itself indicates what kind of error it was. And a positive uh, value means that uh, the operation was successful, but that there is additional information that we need to report about the success. For example, the positive value, we can, we can use that to indicate a partial read or a partial write, uh, if it's a read or write operation that, that we are calling. And uh, we use this pattern in every place where we have a function that uh, needs to report some kind of status that doesn't always succeed. So if you have a very trivial function that, for example, just assigns a value, that function is by definition always going to succeed. So we don't need to report any status. So we make that function void. But if uh, you have a function that has any kind of um, at least basically two um, types of results that can happen if you call that function, for example, a success or a, a success and a partial success or a success or a failure, then uh, we always use a integer status uh, code that we return from that function. And uh, we always try to return the status through the return value. So we don't, we don't uh, try to put this integer into a parameter. If we have some complex value, then of course we can return the a more complex data structure through a parameter uh, as, as well as returning a status code. But a status code is our primary way of um, returning status from every function. The main benefits of standardizing the return codes is that we get standardized expectations. We know what to expect. In all the code, we can then we know for sure that if there is a negative value returned, that it's always an error. And we also know for sure that if there is a value returned that is zero or above zero, then it's always success. And we get cleaner code this way because we, we get the same type of checks in every place where we need to check for errors. And it becomes also easy to propagate um, the, the errors uh, up the call stack because we have standardized values for, for different types of errors that we need to uh, return back to the caller.
The drawbacks of standardizing return codes is that it does put more pressure on the programmers because the programmers need to always make sure that they return the correct status codes. And that's a good thing that uh, programmers need to be aware of the fact that they need to return a, a proper return status code. You do get longer code because uh, you do need to check for errors in, in C code where functions return errors. And especially if you are um, working with safety critical systems, you would want to have um, the proper settings for your lint tools set up so that the lint tool always checks that you have verified the return value. So you always have to um, you always have to check the return value of every function that returns something. And that is something that, for example, PCLint can um, automatically detect and uh, create an error if you don't check the return code. But the consequence is, of course, that you get longer code because now you have to check the return values and you have to then return another code to the caller indicating that there was an error. But again, it's a good thing because your code becomes more robust. And another drawback of uh, fitting all of the possible error situations into a very limited list of um, return values is that we do get limited level of detail. So we need to kind of um, generalize uh, our return codes uh, when we create a standardized way of returning status. And that does remove a level of detail from uh, the actual situation that has occurred. But that's also a good thing because it has it means that there is less um, ambiguity in terms of uh, what you get as a return code from a function you're calling. And you can always have the same expectations uh, regarding the return values. We implement this pattern by basically always returning an Erno code and uh, the standard set of Erno codes is defined in Erno.h, uh, which is a standard C library header. And uh, we make sure that every non-trivial function returns a status code, that return values must be checked. So if uh, you call something here, um, then you always check for the return code. And if it, if it is an error code, then you return a standardized error, error code up to the caller. And error codes are always constant. What this means is that you don't just forward an error from a function you have called up to the caller because that function might change and then you would be returning another error code which is not expected by the caller. So um, when you are checking for errors, always uh, one of the key um, ideas in this pattern is that you always return uh, constant error codes to the caller. And this way you can document the return values. So you can have a piece of documentation that says that, you know, if there was uh, an IO error operation, uh, that some kind of, uh, that the IO operation has failed um, somewhere down the call stack, then this function will always return EIO, which means that there was an IO error. And so regardless of whether the functions you're calling uh, change in their implementation, you will always return EIO. So that, um, that feature of your function or that behavior is always going to be in line with your documentation. And if you don't, uh, if you just forward the uh, values that you get from other functions you're calling, then you cannot have that um, in the documentation for your current function because it would not be a constant value. So it's a very good um, pattern to, to actually only return constant values. The error convention that we are using is that negative means bad, zero means there was nothing to report, and positive means positive success, so good value. And we use the standard Erno codes uh, for our errors. And here are some codes that I use the most often. So there is a lot more codes that um, fit into this uh, pattern, but these ones are the most commonly used ones. Uh, you have e-access when there is some kind of permission error. You get e-io when there was any kind of io error. So if you fail to write to the hardware or you get some kind of hardware error, you can just return e-io to indicate that there was an io error. Uh, e-no-end means uh, the item you were looking for is not found. Uh, e-again means that you need to try again. So this is something you would return if there was, uh, for example, a timeout, uh, then you return E again uh, to indicate that uh, the caller needs to 
call the function again. E busy uh, means that the resource is busy, and the E inval means that there was some invalid arguments in the uh, in the arguments of the function. You can also, uh, for invalid arguments, you can also use assertions. It depends kind of on your implementation. If the if the invalid argument cannot be handled somehow, like if there is if it's really truly invalid and should never happen, then you should use an assertion for it um, because that would uh, help you identify any cases where that, that invalid argument is actually passed to the function. Uh, but you can also always return e inval to indicate that there was an invalid value passed. The best practices of using return codes is that you should always you should always check the return values. That's that's a given, but that's also something that is very rarely done actually. Uh, that you check return values. So any function that returns a status, you should always check its return value. You should always return Erno on uh, on error. So on on failure, you should use one of the standard codes and not something uh, custom. Uh, you should uh, always have a well defined uh, error status. And uh, you should always return zero on success. Uh, you should return. A, you you can return. You you should not like. It's not that you should, but you can return a positive value if there was partial success. Um, and uh, you can also use uh, parameters for complex return values. So if you're getting, for example, let's say um, a complex data structure, you're you you have a function that says you know get uh, something, and then you have to return a complex data structure. You never return that as a return value, instead you return a status code, and then you place the actual data you're retrieving into one of the parameters that are passed to the function. Some of the pitfalls is that you don't have a clear definition of uh, standard return values. Uh, it should be always clear to the programmers uh, what the convention is in the project. So if you're doing a lot of device driver work, for example, EIO is going to be a common return value that you would be returning if there is an IO error. So make sure that you have a standard, um, standardized set of error codes that uh, the programmers can always look to when they need to report an error. And uh, the second pitfall is returning structs. So whenever you find yourself that you need to return some complex data, uh, it's usually um, not correct to return a struct because there's always some kind of uh, possibility that the operation can fail. So the moment there is any kind of possibility that an operation can fail, you should return a status code um, and you should place the data into one of the parameters. That keeps your code clean and uh, has a clear set of expectations. You can then check for the return status uh, as part of an if statement, which is a lot easier than trying to first get the structure and then check some kind of parameter or field inside that structure for an error. So don't do that. Some of the alternatives to return value codes is, for example, exceptions, if you have them available. Uh, in C, we don't have exceptions uh, in the same way as we have in other languages. So we, we can have things like set jump and long jump in C, but those things don't unwind the stack. So there is no way of handling this propagation of an error up uh, up the call stack. But if you have support for exceptions, that's one possibility to handle errors. Um, number two is logging. So this is something we use a lot where we, uh, when we have an error, we log that error uh, before returning the status code. So you usually use logging in conjunction with, uh, with return status codes, and that helps you debug the application. Um, and panic. Panic is, of course, something that uh, halts the, the firmware or restarts the, the software. So panic is something you would use uh, as part of an assertion, for example. So if you have assertions in your code, when the assertion executes and fails, then typically the system will default to an infinite loop, which is part of the panic. And then hopefully we'll get restarted using your watchdog timer, or you can define your own custom function that gets called so that you restart your system upon some kind of non-recoverable error. And um, the long jump is a, is a thing that has been present in C, but something that is very dangerous to use because you're essentially just jumping to another place in the, in the program without any, um, without any way to go back. So you're trying to handle an exception and it's really um, not helping you because you cannot 
um, properly release all the resources. So whenever you need to handle an exception using a long jump, the next thing you should do is just restart the, the firmware anyway. So long jump is, is something that you should try avoid avoid using because it's not a proper way to, to handle errors in a C program. And uh, conclusion for this module, um, I've covered for you the main uh, standardized return value pattern that you can use everywhere in your code. This is something you would be using every single day if you're coding C. And um, by using this pattern, you can uh, improve readability of your code, improve the quality of your code, and uh, improve also the maintainability of your code because the programmers that are working with the code then know, know what to expect. So uh, let's have a look at the quiz and see how well you understand this content. What status code should a function return upon success when there is no other information that needs to be conveyed? What status code should a function return on failure? Why is it not a good idea to forward a return status value from a function you have called and then return it without any changes? And when should you return a positive status code? All right, that's it for this module. I hope you learned something and I'll see you in the next module.